the Museum of Witchcraft, another place in Fallout 4 that causes certain, shall we say extremities, to recede back inside you further than an old man's hairline. This building is a homage to the actual Museum of Witchcraft inside Salem, and is also identical in appearance. It is found in the northeastern portion of the map inside the town of Salem and near similar haunted or spooky locations, such as Dunwich Borders, that we covered two weeks ago. The door is barred, so we must go around the side to gain entrance, and it is here that the mystery begins. Around the side of the museum, we find the tattered, mangled corpse of Private Hart, a member of the Gunners. Now of course her corpse's proximity to the museum raises a few questions, and puts you on guard. But fear not, nothing is going to attack you. Y yet. By searching her corpse, we can find a hollow tape on her, and we can get a rough idea of just how she ended up as a mangled sock puppet. Jeffries, Lee got the recorder working. So this the sort of detail you had in mind when you signed up for the Gunners? Hauling luggage from Lynn Woods for some robot butler? Uh, what was his name? Uh, Wellington? <laughs> Wellingham? Not now, Private. Where's Connors? He's not at his post. Oh, uh, sorry, sir. The lieutenant said he found some tracks. Wanted to check them out. Private Martin. Tracks? What track? What the hell is that? Oh my... C Connors! Where, where's the rest of him? Jesus. Found us. Sergeant Lee grabbed the case. Do not let that thing out of your sight. Everyone inside the museum, now! Major! Major, what found us? So Hart was new to the Gunners, and the group was assigned the task of transporting something from Lynn Woods. Though what it was, we do not yet know. Then someone known as Private Connors goes off to look at some tracks. Well, before long, it appears that Hart found him, and he was torn apart. A roar is heard, and someone called Major Jeffries tells them all to get inside and grab the case, as it, whatever it is, find them. Hart asks what has attacked them, and shortly after, we assume, was torn to pieces, just outside of the museum. This will start the Devil's Due Quest, and you will have to explore the inside of the museum. You find yourself in an old basement, and not a few seconds go by when you hear the noises. Heavy footsteps, growling and snarling. Something large is inside this museum, perhaps the something that was tracking the group of gunners, and that slaughtered heart. The rest of the first room is quite plain, containing the type of things that one tends to store in the basement. Going into the next room, you find this scene. A corpse is clearly being chewed, hanging through the floorboards, blood still dripping from it. You can loot the body before it is dragged away by whatever the creature is. The next room has desks and a chalkboard, so perhaps some form of schooling or education took place here before the war. Several candles can be found lit in this room, and I believe that the gunners may be the most likely culprits, seeking some form of light as they hid in here, shitting bricks. Though of course, we don't have to point out how Moronic dozens of candles with open flames lying about the place in a wooden basement is. Oh wait, yes we fucking do. More music cues and starling and dragging help to soil, if they are not already, your britches. This next room makes me think that this may have been an after school or before school club kind of thing, at least on the surface. You have desks and a blackboard for homework, couches, a TV and a pool table for relaxing. Plus, there's also the things that we will look at upstairs as well. The last jump scare down here comes in the form of whatever is up there throwing its dinner at its arse, with the bodies piling up inside the basement. Of course, there are more gunners, and serve as a good source of resources and caps. The corpse of Major Jeffries is found here as well, though there isn't anything of interest on him. However, he did seem to know what was going on, and wasn't surprised when it, whatever it is, found them, which becomes important later. These mannequins serve no purpose other than to scare you when the bodies fall from the roof. They sort of remind me of the ones from I Am Legend, actually. There's one last room down here that I want to look at before we go upstairs, to confront whatever is causing that fucking racket. This room also ties together my after-school theory. We have already found a few bones down here, though not a lot, suggesting that not many people were present, which makes sense, since the time of the bombs hitting Boston was just before 10am. We can find this bird shop sitting in the corner. They were most likely doing schoolwork if the desk and pen is anything to go on. 
The way it is pointed towards the wall makes me think that this was a punishment of sorts. Sort of like putting someone in the corner with one of those fuckwad caps on. Now, I find it odd that the gunners would bother lighting the skeleton up, and most of them seem to have been dumped down the stairs if they're found down here. This makes me think that there is another possibility. Someone else lit the candles. The burr is yet another piece of evidence that kids were present here. Well, time to bite the bullet, clench our arse cheeks, admire his smooth crotch, and find out what is up there. Ignore the other things up here for now, we'll look at them after we kill whatever manner of beast lurks here. But we're ready. We can do this. Whatever it is, we can do it. Fuck. 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 Jesus. Moses. Christ. Fuck. No. No. Yeah. So it's a savage death claw, and the bastard is over level 50. Now remember, the death claw is a wily one, and its weak spot, oddly enough, is not the heavily armored and plated head, but the soft underbelly. So yeah, try and shoot it there as much as you can. Pretty understandable why the gunners died. They got slaughtered by this majestic hunter, this king among beasts. Now onto the place itself. The first and creepiest thing is this. A circle of mannequins posed around a naked one, with its back to a wooden beam. Now given that this is the witchcraft museum, I think this is meant to depict the burning of a witch, with the one standing on what appears to be a pile of ash and bones being the witch, and the spectators being the other mannequins. The design of it is also another piece of evidence the kids may have been involved here, as the backdrop is of the low standards only the young can produce. The next question is most likely this, why are these still standing after all this time? I mean, nude mannequins? Kids would not have set this up, nor would the museum. It looks like more of the type of thing you always see when someone of the insane persuasion is involved. Next, we see more of the museum with large holes in the walls and more mannequins posed throughout. These holes do seem to be Deathclaw shaped, which makes sense given that the Savage Deathclaw was present here, although it still does not explain why none of this stuff was knocked over. A Grognock the Barbarian comic can be found in this table, and then we can find another example of a perfect exhibition depicting a witch hanging. Or would it be a warlock in this case? I'm not sure. Someone needs to fill me in on the correct terms, whether or not a man would be described as a witch back then or not. Perhaps a scumbag sorcerer? But once again, the hanging exhibition is like the burning one. Shit. Furthermore, I find it highly unlikely that the Deathclaw never just knocked over all the displays, or they didn't get knocked over during the 200 years or more that have passed since they were put up. Or, you know, the nuclear explosion, the shockwave of which you would think would do it. This along with the candles that the gunners seem unlikely to have lit, makes me think that someone else was in here as well. But we'll get to that. Now onto the topic of the Deathclaw. Jeffrey said they were tracked here by this Deathclaw to this museum. It then killed them. I have a few things to say about that. The first is how the fuck did it get in? N no, no, seriously, I know where it was resting before we showed up, but the basement door isn't big enough and the front door's barred so I'm unsure how this thing even managed to get inside the museum in the first place. Then there's the topic of why it was salvaged in the first place. Well, we need to go into the place it came from, the bogs, and this is where we find the last hollow tape, and lots of cracked death claw eggs. So first up, let's take a look at one of the cracked eggs. It's split in half and this gives us a view of what, I'm guessing, is the underdeveloped fetus of a death claw. <sighs> and that's just pretty sad. Then, let's listen to Sergeant Lee's hollow tape. A nest full of death claw eggs. A dozen, maybe more. Smashed to bits. Except this one. No wonder they wouldn't tell us what was in that case. If I'd known, I would have personally told the gunner bosses and that glorified liquor cabinet Wellingham to take those Diamond City caps and stuff them. I guess we know why that Deathclaw tracked us all the way from Lynn Woods now. <laughs> we stole their damn kids. Christ. Maybe... Maybe if we just return the eggs. Oh, hey, Mama. You looking for this? So the gunners stole some Deathclaw eggs from Lynn Woods. 
the remains of which can be found here, smashed, we assume, by the gunners, as it would be pretty weird if the mother did it. Major Jeffrey seems to have been the only one who knew what was in the case, as every hull tape we have seen so far points to the others being ignorant until they were getting attacked by the Deathclaw. The mother showed up and killed them all. It makes sense that it would be that enraged as they stole her young, hence the reason it was savage. We can find the last remaining egg, still looking good. It can be returned to the nest or turned in for money. Well, the nest is the most interesting option and the one we will look at, but not just yet. There is another room in here. If we go to this spot in the church, we can either use a jetpack or console commands to get up into this little roof space, with all sorts of nonsense going on. So we walk into this wee room and, yup, poor sod stabbed to a table by a sword surrounded by candles. There be sorcery afoot. So this, being the Museum of Witchcraft, and it being in the town of Salem, it shouldn't be all that surprising really. What's more, it looks like the door was barricaded to stop people getting inside. Which, to me anyway, suggests that when they were performing this deed, someone tried to stop them. It d doesn't seem to have worked though. Based on the clothes and the baton onto the crates, I think this was most likely a security guard. The mentats would also suggest head-related problems with whoever did this, possibly meaning they were mental. This was most likely committed before the bombs went off, however, and I doubt they're the ones responsible for the candles and arrangement of mannequins. This doesn't really leave us with much though, as the culprit could have been either someone on drugs, a cult, or something else entirely. Cultish or supernatural events are common around this part of the map, so it's entirely possible that this place is just another example of that. We can also take a look at the only terminal in this building that details the events available here. To be honest, it seems like a piss take. It goes on about painstakingly recreated models. They have a huge collection of relics available in the gift shop and a membership program, none of which is really present. In here anyway. Also, I still have no clue how the death claw got in. Now, off to Lynn Woods to return the egg. So before we return it, let's recap. A group of gunners were transporting, unknown to all except Major Jeffries, death claw eggs. However, they were attacked by the mother, the savage death claw, and took shelter inside the Museum of Witchcraft, and got killed anyway. This museum seemed to have a school club in the basement, where we can actually find the corpse of one of the supposed students, killed during work. Upstairs, we find the remains of the gunners, and some very odd displays. Displays that were clearly put up after the bombs dropped, and couldn't still be up if they were set up before. All depicting the deaths of witches. On the top floor we find what may be some actual magic or sacrificing, as a security guard was pinned to a table by a sword. And now, we are here in Lynn Woods, to return the egg. So don't be stupid. That death claw made a cool entrance, so don't shoot it. Just approach the nest and place the egg back inside, then back the fuck up. Now you have a death claw that does not want to hurt you. After it starts throwing rotted flesh, dirt and feces, still do not shoot. Instead, have a gander at the nest to see of all the things it has maimed and killed. Also, I think this one might be the male as it's much smaller than the other one. The Savage Deathclaw. The Deathclaw Gauntlet can also be found here as well, perhaps wielded by the corpse it is beside. So, we did a good thing here, returning the egg. Only thing left to do is steal the egg again to antagonize the widower Deathclaw, then run like the clappers by. After you have rused the reptile, return to the nest and relieve your bowels, knowing that today, for approximately 48 seconds, you did the right thing. A museum paying homage to the dark arts that once held sway in the land, and may do so again, and the story of a group of gunners who stole from a death claw. Egypts, I hope you enjoyed our look at it. If you did, give the video a like, and if you want regular updates, subscribe. Any suggestions for lore or future videos should be left in the comments below. Better yet, go on to my subreddit, so we can discuss them in more detail. It's linked in the description. If you wish to, you can support me on Patreon, which is also linked in the description. Go have a gander at the rewards. Follow me on Twitter or Facebook to get regular updates or have a wee chat. Any business you wish to discuss, email me at enthapple.business at gmail.com and I will get back to you as soon as possible. 
I hope you enjoyed the episode, and I hope to see you in the next one. And until then, goodbye.